let me begin with a word of prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for this class. Just ask you just uh, guide our steps today. Help us to begin to uh, just glorify you what we do. And just uh, the uh, students who would ask good questions as they think of them, Lord. In the name I pray, that, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, so uh, I guess I should prove the laws of exponents for you guys. So let's look at a couple things. Um, how about this? If I have a to the log base a of u plus the log base a of w, what's that equal to? Well, remember, we know the law of exponents. a to the s plus t is a to the s times a to the t, right? So if that's true, then this must be equal to a to the log base a of u times a to the log base a of w, right? Just thinking of s and t as the logarithms here, all right? But then what? But then, you see, the exponential and the log are inverse functions, right? So what I have on the right-hand side here is u times w, right? But then what we can do is we can take the log base a of this equation. And you see I'll have the log base a of a to the log base a of u plus the log base a of w is equal to the log base a of uw. But then, what can you guys tell me about the left-hand side of this equation? What is it? Notice that we're taking the log base a of an exponential, so these are inverse functions. We're just left with what? This right here, right? So this gives us the log base a of u plus the log base a of w is equal to the log base a of uw. And there is one of our main properties of the logarithm. All right. So um, next up, any questions? So I just want, I wanted to show you why the law of logarithms was true. If you already know the law of exponentials, it, it, it's a, con a logical consequence of algebra we already know and the definition of the logarithm. Because this is a weird rule on its lonesome, right? Like just by itself, why is that true? It's weird, right? But it, that, it's just this written in log notation as it turns out. Now, the other thing we know about exponentials is that if we have a to the s raised to the, say, p power, it's what, a to the, uh, a to the sp, right? So if we exponentiate, if we take a power of an exponential, we just multiply the exponentials, right? Multiply the, uh, the exponents, rather. So um, if I have u is equal to a to the log base a of u, first of all, I can write that, right? Agree? That's an identity because the exponential and the log are inverse functions. I can write that. And then what I do is I just take both, both, both sides to the p power, all right? So this to the power p is equal to that to the power p, right? But what's my rule? And, and by the way, I could just as well as write this a to the ps, right? Like the numbers commute, so we can go either way. So here, I have a to the p times the log base a of u. All right, and then finishing blow here, if I take log base a of both sides, I get log base a of u to the power p is log base a of a to the p log base a of u. What happens then? Again, the log and the exponential are inverse functions, so what the right-hand side simplifies to is just this. Oops. P 
log base A of U. So let me just put it up here and put a box around it. So what we have is that log base A of U to the power P is P times the log base A of U. That's the power property for the log, right? We can pull powers out. There was one more, one more rule we had. What was it? Do you guys remember? The division one? Remember that? Let's try that out. Log base A of U over W. Any questions before I go on? Or? So I just, I'm showing you why the rules I wrote down. Yeah, I'm just trying to explain why the rules are true. That's, that's what we're doing. We will apply these, of course, to more problems here in a minute. But just taking a couple of, class, a couple of minutes of class time to prove the laws is all. Um, Now, how about this one, guys? Can you, this one, I sometimes ask this on a test, like show that the law of logarithms for the division follows from the other two laws over here, all right? So actually this, the law I'm about to derive here, it follows logically from what I already wrote over there. So let me get us started. Um, so here, log base A of U times w to the minus, minus one power. Do you guys agree with that or? Does that make sense? Because remember, division is the same as multiplication by the reciprocal, right? And then I can do what? Yeah? Wouldn't that just also equal log base a u minus log base a w? It would be that. We're trying to derive that. How about, but you're, you're exactly right. But here's why that's true. You're exactly right. But, oh, but, but you see why that's true? That's true by just applying the first rule that we derive, right? Because the log of a product is the sum of the logs, right? And then we can look at this as what? This is the power is minus one, right? And so by the power property, we get log base A of U minus log base A of W. And that's what you're telling me, right? Because that's what I wrote in the notes <coughs> we wrote last class. But my point to you is that law of logarithms is a logical consequence of the first two I proved today. All right? So you're like, wait a minute, does that mean that if I know the first two laws, I don't need to learn the third? Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's nice to know this, <laughs> just for the, you know, just to apply it. So you guys have any, now that I've, done these proofs, that's pretty much it, proof-wise. So that's the final, the log base A U minus log base A W. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't simplify it any more than that. That's pretty much it, yeah. Any questions in here? Let me do another example that applies these properties, yeah? So example one, let's expand um, the natural log of e to the x squared square root of x um, z cubed, all right, divided by 2. <laughs> there we go. Ex let's expand this into a sum of logs, okay? So, oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot my y. There we go. If I'm going to have an x and a z, I, I need to have a y too, otherwise it just feels wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. No? You guys are like, we just want to be done. The, 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 the weekend is almost upon us. Let's, let's finish this. No? Do you have another class after this? This is it, right? Th then the weekend starts. You need this? You need this class? All right. How's the homework going? You guys have finished the homework? No? You started the homework? No? Oh. You start the homework. Get it done with. Like, get it out of the way. Well, I have research papers done. Well, okay, but those don't matter. And, um... <laughs> I do. I do more time matter. Hey, 
did you ever think about the fact that I haven't made you write an essay in this class? Yeah, that's why you're my favorite. I'm pretty awesome, aren't I? No. 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 Writing an essay would be even Help worse. Than you, you, write an you, want an, you want an essay? Oh, okay. No, uh, just him. The real not question is, just how on earth would you write an essay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's, um, I mean, I, I personally enjoy writing up like math notes. I enjoy it like quite a lot. So I write on math, but making students write that, like, no, no. Oh, all right. So let me start out. <clears throat> let me just do some steps here. You can see you guys if you agree with me or not. Natural log of e to the x squared. Um, plus the natural log of the square root of x z cubed um, minus the natural log of 2 times y. So we can do more, right? This is a good start. So what is the natural log of e to the x squared? So something you need to remember, something that you need to like hardwire into your brain is like the natural log of e to the stuff is stuff. All right. Natural log and exponential are inverse functions. They undo each other. So this first term, it's just x squared. All right. The next one, I'm going to rewrite as um, the natural log of x z cubed to the one half power, right? And then the last one I'm going to write minus natural log of two plus the natural log of y. I'm going to put a big old parenthesis around that to emphasize what I just did. This become that. All right. Now what can I do the half? If you guys don't mind, I'm just going to do this all together at once. I'm going to take this half. You watch me. You guys watching me? I'm taking this half and I'm putting it out here. All right? If you don't mind me being lazy here for a minute. Now what can I do? I've got x squared plus 1 half. What is that? Natural log of x plus the natural log of z cubed, right? Minus log 2, minus log y. And then what can I do to that 3? If you guys don't mind, I'm going to be lazy again and just do it all right here. Are you watching me? We can take that 3, right? And we can put it out here, right? That's the power property. All right, then let's clean things up. What we got all together here is x squared plus one half natural log of x um, plus three halves natural log of z um, minus the natural log of two minus the natural log of y. And there you go. That's expanded. So I broke it up into a bunch of little baby steps this time. Let me do this kind of example again, but let me just do it in one sweeping move, all right? Let me do this kind of example again, but the fast way. Yep. Do you have to keep the x and the z out? Take the what? The what? The x is one natural log of x Yeah, natural log of z is in parentheses. Oh, oh, that was just me. Um, like, I, I could add parentheses over here. Um, parentheses are optional in natural log. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a good practice to put them there if you've got like a, like a, you know, x plus three or something. But here, the context, could, I could have omitted them. I don't even think about it. I just, you know, I didn't even think about it. 
Um, maybe I should think about it. <laughs> so anyway, um, example two. Let's let's do another expand example. Um, this time I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Log of um, uh, let's see here. Ten log of a thousand um, times the square root of x cubed um, times y divided by um, z to the sixth power there. All right. So this time, and let me, let me extend the square root over the y. All right. So maybe a, a, a better way to do this problem is to just kind of write what the things are. That's 10 to the third power. That's x to the 3 halves power. That's y to the 3 halves, uh, excuse me, y to the half power, right? And then we've got z to the sixth downstairs. My apologies to the people who are not here. You are many. <laughs> and then, this is um, log of 10 to the third power plus the log of x to the 3 halves power plus the log of y to the 1 half power minus the log of z to the sixth power. Truth be told, a lot of times when I'm doing this kind of calculation, I don't even write down the step I just wrote. I would just go straight to what I'm about to write. But anyway, you guys got time on the test to do your steps, so you, know, you don't need to hurry like me. Um, so to start with, we've got 3 plus 3 halves log base, uh, excuse me, log of x plus 1 half log of y minus 6 log z. There you go. Expanded. Okay, so the other thing I should make sure I tell you guys about before I forget is the, is the change of base formula, right? Because, like, sometimes we want to calculate a logarithm and, um, you know, we might want to use natural log to actually calculate it because you might not have, like, a base, log base 3 button on your calculator or something. So, let me erase the uh, some of this over here. I'm gonna leave the. I'm gonna leave the. Uh, I'll leave the. I'm gonna leave the laws, but I'm gonna erase their proof. Let's see here. Do 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 do. do. I guess we know them now. Let's see here. So, all right. Anyway, so change the base formula. Here it is. If we have log base A of x, we can rewrite that as log base B of x divided by log base B of A. And if you don't feel like, oh man, sadness, that was way off. Pragmatically speaking, I often find myself using the following formula. The natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. Because natural log is easy to find on almost any calculator, all right? <laughs> but you see, if you have a logarithm in one base, you can convert it to a logarithm in another base according to this formula. So like, for example, 
3, let's take this, let's try this out. If I wanted to calculate, for example, log base um, 3 of, oh, I don't know, 42, all right? Then the change base formula says I can instead calculate the natural log of 42 divided by the natural log of 3. Again, parentheses optional. I can't make up my mind whether I'm going to opt to write them or not, all right? Now you guys have got me, guys have got me all self-conscious about my parentheses. Tell you what. All right, here we go, here we go. The natural log of 42 is, according to my calculator here, approximately equal to 3.73. Seven six six nine six one eight. There you go. Entirely too many digi digits. What's the natural log of three equal to? You got yourself a one point zero oh nine eight six one two two eight nine. So if we take that and we do that quotient, what do we get? It gives me a 3.402119. There we go. Entirely unnecessary a number of digits, but just for fun. Now, so my point to you is with the change of base formula, we can take something that's log base 3 and we can find its decimal form just using natural log, all right? Which is nice if you only have natural log. Now, in my calculator, I actually have a log base 3 button. Oops, pressed the wrong button. So I can actually calculate this directly with my calculator as well. And when I do that, my calculator tells me that this is equal to 3.402173503. Oh no, look at that. See that? You know how that happened? It's the machine error, this division. My calculator can't hang, it can't do the division correctly in the last digit. Or its log base 3 calculator isn't quite right in the last digit. I don't know, one of these or the other is wrong. Or one of these or the other is more correct than the other, right? Because there is an actual log base 3 of 42, and either one of these or the other of them is closer to it. I'm not sure which. If you want, we could get out the Wolfram Alpha and try it there and see what it gives. Do you guys want to do that? Sure, okay, I, I have at least one, one taker. Why not, let's get nuts. And this is, by the way, one of the joys of Wolfram Alpha, in that Wolfram Alpha will tell us, oh, I forgot the top hat, didn't I? Just a second, I will top hat. Are you guys excited about Top Hat? I'm super excited. Your Top Hat code for today is 4932. There you go. And I also do have an attendance sheet I meant to turn out to, to hang, hand out to you guys. We are section one, right? There you go. Do you pen? You got one? Okay. All right, so let us, let us check the Wolfram Alpha, see what Wolfram Alpha's got to say about, what are we trying to calculate here? Log base 3 of what was it? 42? Oh, come on. 
Well, I see it, but you guys don't. Hello? Work. Thank you. So there's log base 3 of 42. 3.40217305252. Oh, interesting. 27. So this, the, when I calculated the division, I got the last digit of 2. But I think it should be rounded up to, technically it should be rounded up to 3, right? 3053. Yeah, it should be 3 since the next one's a 7. But if you, if you yearn for 50 digits of log base 3 of 42, Wolfram Alpha will give them to you. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I don't know. You know, guys, when I'm teaching physics, right, and I have to calculate something, I often use Wolfram Alpha to calculate it because unlike a calculator, I can see all my steps and I never get in trouble with like round off error if I use Wolfram Alpha to like calculate the answers to my physics problems when I'm like checking answers for a solution or something. So I, I do, you know, no joke, this website's very helpful. Anyway, any questions? Hey, while we got this out, let's play with uh, Desmos for a second. What does the, ooh, 3D, okay, that doesn't matter to us, I'll behave. Um, I will not chase the squirrel. So you guys know what Y equals to X looks like, right? And we can make that dotted, right? If we wanted to. Yeah, let's make it dotted. And green, there we go. Oh wait, but now it's invisible on the stupid screen. Purple then. All right, there's, there's y equals x. Now, how about y equals log base a, oops, of x. We will add a slider. We'll make a equal to, there we go. And then we'll do y equals a to the x. And I don't like purple. For, I want to make that one red. All right, so we got red exponential, and I'll make the logarithm. Come on, come back to me, you dummy. All right, I'll eventually figure out how to do this. What do you guys want? Orange? It's, it's too much like the other one. I can't go with orange. I'm, I'm going to have to go green. A blue? Blue. We can go blue. There we go. Blue it is. All right. Anyway. So, behold. This is the graph of... Man, I, 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 I drew this out on the board in the other section. Man, why didn't I do that? This is so much easier. You know? Well, it's kind of dangerous to use that projector upstairs because when people walk on the roof, like the thing goes up and down and makes you feel car sick and such. Although that can happen here too if somebody like is in the upstairs and they like walk where that is. It'll make it bounce around. So let me point out how this is going, all right? So this is what the graph of the logarithm looks like, all right? So we talked about exponential before, right? It goes, its y-intercept is 1, right? How about the x-intersect sect of, of the logarithm? It's also at 1, right? So these points are reflected. This reflects down to there across the line y equals x. There's also a point, let me put my, I don't really think about base 2.4 too much, you know? Um, let me do 2, 2. Come on. I'll do 20. Step one. So you can see what the different bases look like, right? Let me just go back to like. I'll go back to like base four there. So. 
here's log base 4, here's y equals 4 to the x. When you get to 1, you've got the point what? 1, 4. Right? That reflects down here to the point 4, 1. So you can track points on the exponential, like this is 1, um, well right here you'd have minus 1, 1 fourth, right? That corresponds to the point a 1 fourth comma minus 1 here. All right? There's, if you can graph the exponential, you just take the points and you flip them and you get the graph of, graph of the log. What's, what's the domain of the log? The blue is the log. What's the domain of the log? Starts where? Starts at zero, goes to infinity. What's the range of the log? Well, it keeps going down, 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 down. And if, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, but it just keeps going up and up and up. All right? So, like, the range of the log is minus infinity to infinity. That's not uh, the, which, which, does this one cross zero? No. It's, it's a, which, which, which one do you mean? Well, the log crosses zero here. That's at one. Log of one is zero. Just like exponential of zero is one. Um, but the domain of the exponential is all real numbers. The range of the logarithm is all real numbers. Right? The range of the exponential is zero to infinity. The domain of the logarithm is zero to infinity. So the, you can see the domain and the range getting flip-flopped. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys, so there it is. I'll put it away now. Let's look at, at a um, problem that involves using the properties of the exponential to solve something. Example am I on? Is it four? I guess it must be four, right? So here's a kind of weird problem. We haven't worked one quite like this yet, but I, I did one for the other section. I probably should do it for you guys too while I'm at it. So how about this? We have a nine to the x um, <coughs> plus three to the x minus twelve equals to zero. Let's see if we can solve this animal. A little different than anything we've looked at so far. So there's a kind of, any, any, well, first of all, just give you guys a second. Any ideas? Factor it. So how would you do that? How about this? I, a lot of times I tell people to take the natural log of both sides. Can I do that here? No, I, it's a trap, right? What's the natural log of zero? Put it in your calculator, see what happens. What's natural log of zero? It's what? Undefined. undefined is correct. Because it's, it's got that vertical asymptote on the y-axis, right? Natural log of zero is not defined. It should give you like error domain or something, right? So I, can't, I cannot take the natural log of this equation like, that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't help. He's got the right idea of factoring. Let me give you guys a hint. 9 is 3 squared, right? So 9 to the x is equal to 3 squared to the x, right? But that's the same as 3x squared by properties of exponent. So with that in mind, the equation at the top becomes what? It becomes 3x quantity squared plus 3x minus 12 equals to 0. And you're right, factoring is a good idea. But let me do one more, one more step here before we factor. Let's make a substitution, right? We could let y equals to what? 
if you see how to factor it already, that's great. But I usually make a substitution here, so make sure everybody understands. So I'm going to let y equals 3 to the x, so we can see, make sure we can, everybody can see it. y squared plus y minus 12 <coughs> equals to 0. And when, once I do that, I, I think everybody should be able to see how to factor this, right? We got what? Twelve is what? One times twelve, two times six, three times four. Three and four looks like a good idea because four minus three is one. Three minus four is minus one. But we had a coefficient of one, which means we want the four to win. So we probably should put like plus four, right? Plus four minus what? Three, yeah. Now you can try it out. That gives us plus 4y minus 3y, which gives us the cross term of y. We get the minus 12 like we want, right? So what are this? So this either gives us what? Either y equals minus 4, right? Or what? Y equals 2, positive 3. But are we trying to solve for y? No, we're trying to solve for for x. So this gives us what? We got ourselves a 3 to the x equals to minus 4 or a 3 to the x equals to 3, which of course is 3 to the 1, right? So what can you tell me about that? What's that? Y equals, oh, you're saying this is the one that works. What is, what is x equal to here? X is equal to 1, right, from the 1 to 1 property, if you like. And this right here, no solution, right? No solution. Why no solution? Well, if you take the natural log of both sides, we, anyway, this is no solution, all right? If you like, I can draw, I can explain graphically y equals 3 to the x looks like this, right? y equals minus 4 is down here somewhere, right? They never meet. See, 3 to the x is positive. There's no possible way you can get minus 4 out of 3 to the x using real x. So what that means is that this one is extraneous. All right, it's not even in the solution set. The other one, x equals to 1, well, there you go, that's the solution. Now, there's one like this in the homework, but instead of having 9 to the x, I think it's got like 4 to the x and 2 to the x, but you can probably figure out how to do it with, in view of this example. All right. Let me work another example for us here, unless you guys got a question. X equal 1 is the answer. Yep, that's it. And you can easily check that it works, right? 9 plus 3 minus 12. 12 minus 12, 0. Yay! Woohoo! So the example I'm about to do, I don't usually cover until like later. But because somebody else asked me about it in the other section, just to try to keep you guys like more or less on the same track as my other section, I'm also going to do it in here. All right, so like here it goes. Um, sometimes I don't cover these examples till later, but it, there's, there's no harm in doing it now. Basically, from here on out, the course we're just essentially applying laws of logarithms and laws of exponentials and creating equations and solving them and looking at functions with these formulas and studying them. So you could put these things in different order. The, line, the, the, the larger point is we're trying to understand exponentials and logarithms, and the way to understand them is to spend time with them, right? Just like people. You don't usually know people you haven't spent time with, right? So, same with math. You need to, need, need to spend time with math. Um, example five. So let's try to solve the natural log of x minus 3 
plus the natural log of x plus 3 equals to, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> the natural log of, uh, oh, I don't know, 13. How can we solve such a problem? We haven't done anything like this yet, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the property of log that we proved at the start of class to rewrite it as the natural log of the product. So this is really the same as the natural log of x minus 3 times x plus 3. So I put all my, all my terms together, okay, like that. Now, I told you guys that the exponential of the natural log of stuff or did I tell you the natural log of the exponential stuff? I can't remember what I did. Which way did it go earlier? I've forgotten. But anyway, whether or not I told you this yet or telling you it again, something you should know is that e to the natural log of stuff is equal to stuff. Now this stuff, it's got to be, it's got to be positive stuff. All right. You can't put a negative number into a natural log. I mean, you can, but you'd be wrong. Or you'd be in a different class where we're talking about the complex exponential and the logarithm as extension to the complex numbers. But we're not in that class, and I've been forbidden from even talking about calculus in here, so I certainly can't talk about complex analysis. You guys are so mean to me. You won't let me do any of my fun math. I mean, this math is fun, but... <laughs> you will disagree. <laughs> hey. So the natural enemy of the natural log is the exponential is my point. So what we can do is we can take the exponential of this equation, e, e, like raise, exponentiate to both powers like that. And in so doing, the natural log basically just cancels out. Another way to say this is the natural log is a, is a, is a one to one function, right? Do you guys see that? What's the graph of natural log look like? What's the graph of the natural log look like? It looks like this. All right. Is that pass, does that pass the horizontal line test? It does, right? Which means we have the one to one property for the natural log. So once I have natural log of blah equals natural log of whatever, that means that blah is equal to whatever. In this case, the blah is x minus 3 times x plus 3, and the whatever is 13. It's important, though, we have to have natural log of just one thing equals to natural log of just one thing. Like, I can't just equate the things before I combine them. It would have been wrong to just drop the natural logs and simply write x minus 3 plus x plus 3 equals to 13. That would have been total nonsense, but also a very popular wrong answer on test three in this course. Very popular, but also very wrong. All right, <laughs> you, can't, you can't just, like some people are just like, I'm just gonna divide by ln, right? This is one of the kind of things that I will feature in my math pranks channel, which I eventually create. It's, it's gonna be all stuff like that. I showed you the other ones, right? I think I showed you before. Like 64 over 16, you cancel the sixes and you get four, right? Yeah. <coughs> On that note, I don't know if I told you guys this already. I asked you a question. Never asked you this question? Can a, can a, ninja, can a ninja throw a throwing star? The correct answer is sure he can. If you get that joke, you're cultured. If you don't, you need to think about your life. Some people say culture is reading Shakespeare. I say it's watching Naruto. It's got all kinds of, it's, it's a story of loss, tragedy, acknowledgement, failure to acknowledgement, the, 
the wrongs, the evils in society that come from people not acknowledging other people from recognizing their worth. Deep truths in Naruto. And also a healthy dose of ancestor worship, so don't do that. But um, anyway, mod out the ancestor worship. We, shouldn't, we should not worship ancestors, right? I'm against it anyway. I mean, I had some pretty good, pretty good ancestors, but none of them really worth worshiping. I mean, I like them. But. Do we agree? Yep. Do those two not go over like a, a quadratic? Oh yeah, this is a quadratic. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a quadratic. So once we get the quadratic, we're almost home free, right? But we need to solve it. This one is pretty nice because it ends up being x squared equals to, uh, what, 22? Which means x is equal to what? Yeah, x is equal to uh, square root of 22. Or x is equal to minus the square root of 22, right? Now, in these problems, we have to be careful. Because, just because, okay, here's the thing is, once you do that, that combining the natural log step, it's only justified if both of the logs that you're combining have positive inputs. So it's kind of like the squaring the equation step. You can end up adjoining solutions that aren't really there in this step right here. This step going from here to here, I can, I can be adjoining solutions that aren't really solutions. And that happened here. See, because if you go back to the original problem, square root of 22 is fine. Square root of 22 is like, what, four point something or other? So 4 minus 3, positive. 4 plus 3, positive. Great. We can put square root of 22 back into the original equation. However, minus root 22, that will not work. Because when I put that up into here, I get minus root 22 minus 3. That's negative. Okay? So this right here, we have to throw out. This is outside the domain of original equation. All right? In other words, this one is an extraneous solution. It's not even in the solution set, all right? So the answer is simply <laughs> 4, no, the square root of 22. Do you guys have any questions? Oh man, I'm out of time. Does x squared equal, I thought x squared is always equal. Well, yeah, I, I put plus or minus root 22, but the thing is, when we go back to the original problem, only the square root of 22 works.